Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to introduce you to something that I've done in C++. This is a language called Graphic Fuck, Graphics Fuck, and it is a brother to um, in another language called Rainfuck. You might know Rainfuck, or you might not, but Rainfuck is a very funny language with a funny name, um, with confusing symbols, and I think it's supposed to kill your brain, right? Uh, and right here I have, I have a program of uh, Brainfuck, and it is going to render out a Mandelbrot set onto the console, as you can see here. So Brainfuck is a Turing complete program, which means in theory it should be able to compute anything that you ever wanted. Ray tracing, 3D games, anything, um, even to AI and all sort of crazy and bizarre stuff. But um, this right here we can see is just text, right? It's not actually pixel. And since it's text, uh, you can only have grayscale value. You can see this is just grayscale value of the text. You don't really have a pixel with color red, green, or blue. You don't. You don't have any of that. So how could I make something that could render into a window that have a uh, color and all kind of stuff, so I can actually make ray tracing and 3D rendering? Oh, actually 2D as well. Anything you want, right? So I created. Graphics fuck. and it's basically brain fuck but smash with graphics. Here, yeah. I have wrote a simple program which uh, demonstrate all of this feature. Um, I'll show you what it is right now. As you can see right now, um, we have a window with color flashing, which isn't very something <coughs> that impressive. But um, since it's written in a very confusing language, very hard to understand language, uh, it can create something like this as Pretty interesting, I would say. They can render basically anything on it. So, I will show you how this language works. I'll open Paint and show you. So, as any brain track program, we start off with uh, an array of memory with uh, with uh, a lot of bytes in it. Remember, each memory is bytes, so that means you can only set from 0 to 255. So no negative number, no, no uh, nothing that is <coughs> greater than 255. Here I will, uh, I will duplicate this multiple times. Um, yep. Wait, let me open a transparent selection so we can run it without having trouble. So yeah, let me creating the board of the memory size that I can demonstrate you what is graphic fox is all about. All right. Uh, don't worry about that. Just yeah, so basically this is my, our, uh, our memory stuff, right? So now a normal brainfuck program would start its pointer at the very beginning, but my my graphic fu graphics fuck um, that which doesn't start from the beginning starts somewhere else, not in the beginning, not at the end, somewhere in the middle. It could be in the very middle, but it may not be in the very middle. Okay, so I would just put it over here. Okay, so the basic idea of this is you have um, a bunch of bytes of Im uh, data where you can put your image onto it, and you have your cursor, your pointer over here. So now, if you want to render something on it, you can just manipulate these uh, cell to be able to get the image you want, right? But then I have a problem. So the problem is like this: this is your window rendering, right? And you, you're rendering lines by lines through here. But then let's say you go this much, and then the program suddenly takes your thing and then render it onto the screen. Now you could actually have a bunch more trash because of memory. You might be, uh, you might be using this as like temporal memory, so you can work with over here. And you could have trash on here, and then the program would just draw your trash onto the screen. You don't want to do that, right? So what I did is basically instead of having the pointer right at the right here, I would move my pointer over here. My pointer would be over here. The start location would be over here. So then this is will act kind of like a button. So if this is one, if this is set to one, then whatever is over here will get rendered onto the screen. So you can basically decide when you want your buffer to get rendered onto the screen over here. As default, it will be set to zero. 
So you will have to manually go to here and set it to 1 in order for your program to actually render. <coughs> so that's cool. But then how do you actually move your pointer to an actual pixel on the screen? You can't just move it by a predefined value. Actually you can, but to do it automatically, so you can do like pixel and pixel and pixel, you can't just type all of that in. That would be too, um, too hard, right? It would take too much time just to write a program, and the program would be huge just to render something on it. So no, I came up with a solution. What I would do is I would move my pointer to the right three, um, four times? Yeah, four times. Over here. So basically, I would have Three, uh, I'll be using three of the, these bytes to use as a sort of teleportation to somewhere in here. This would be the X location in the, on the screen I want to render, uh, want to go to, the Y location I want to go to, and then this would be another button. So now if I want to go to the location, for example, 5 and 16, then I can just set the value to 5 and 16, and then set this to 1. Then my pointer will get teleported somewhere in the byte, where I would be able to manipulate the pixels my liking to do whatever I want, right? So, no, oh, of course, all of those are set to zero, but if I and yeah, so this would be I can teleport back and forth between pixels and rendering, for example. Uh, but then, but then, uh, if I have different version of the same language graphics, fuck, what would I do? If I have like more settings over here, like for example, later I might have VSync on here. Then what do I do? If I use the old program which didn't have VSync on, didn't know VSync exists, then since the pointer would basically kind of like move to the right again, to to have space for the VSync byte, right? Then my my thing would break break because it would think that this is where everything starts. But this is well, I mean. You will think that this is where the bytes of the pixel will start, but clearly it isn't. This is where we hit the button to render onto the screen. So if the player just, I mean, if the user just manipulating the wrong pixel, then things will get messed up. So what I come up with is, so right now this version doesn't have a uh, VSync yet. I might add it in the future, but I, yeah, right now I don't have it. So this one right here will be re really as kind of like a counter. Of how many bytes of setting, yeah, I call those settings, before we actually get to the byte where we would start rendering, right? So then, if I want to move to here, I can just see, oh hey, it's actually the number 4. I can just move here. And actually, uh, moving is still hard, but uh, this would be a lot simpler. It would be doable. Uh, so, yeah. You're gonna, uh, I can have the number 4 over here, and then, so I know when, how much setting I have to go through before I actually get to the real byte. So yeah, basically that is all, and also there's this symbol, this, which basically just moving the entire pointer back to the beginning. You know how, um, how hard it is, it would be, for example, like, if your pointer was, like, over here, and then you would have to calculate where you're actually at. You have to remember where you're actually at in order for you to actually move back to where it starts, and that is a lot of hard work. I just adding, I just add another symbol, which is this symbol over here. I don't know how, what it's called, but it's this symbol over here. And what it basically do is basically teleport you back to the starting memory location of where you would probably be start with, so then you can start manipulating over and over again. Yeah. So that is the basic of how my language works. Now I give you a challenge. I'll give you a challenge. Try to understand what this does, and uh, and how does that be able to put out uh, the how was it able to drawing draw pixels onto the screen like this? That will be a challenge I give you. All right? It's simple, but yeah, you can try to decode it. So now with this, it is a lot more easier for you to be able to draw all kind of things you want to do. Right now I can just only do this because I'm very bad at programming in Braveheart. But I think this was interesting so that's why I just took on and do this. But I'm still very bad at Braveheart. Right? So hopefully you can use this and do something with it. Hopefully one of you would be talented enough to be able to create something cool like um, I wouldn't hope you'd be able to 
It would be unimaginable if you guys can even make a ray tracer with this. Because this is still really hard. You can't really, you can't really do much. Actually, it is possible, but it's hard, right? Hopefully you'll be able to do something. Maybe render a rectangle, maybe render a circle. And then post it online and show off to your family and friends. And being a, a legend. So yeah. Um, you can... This is... This is actually in... Uh, in OLC Pixel Game Engine, I use OLC Pixel Game Engine to um, to render everything I want uh, on the screen. You can use other stuff as well. It would be fun if you can make like a like an OpenGL version of this same program <coughs> and uh, post it online as well. And you can use DirectX um, in Vulkan as well. It's up to you which one you want to use. But as long as you follow the rule that I told you. Then it will be graphics fuck, at least my version of graphics fuck. So yeah, for that uh, I will also um, put the documentation of how this works on GitHub. If you look at the description, you'll probably uh, be able to get to that, uh, get to the uh, get to this project as well. So yeah. So with that, uh, I end off this video. Feel free to subscribe and like. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.